My name is Janet Looney, and I'm director of the European Institute of Education and Social Policy in Paris. During my career, I've led major international studies on student assessment, and this is the topic I'll be talking to you about in Module 3 of this course, where I'll be focusing on the principles behind competence-based assessment and good practice in assessing key competences. In this first introductory module, I'd like to give you the basic key points concerning assessing key competences effectively. As you'll learn throughout this MOOC, teaching, learning, and assessment of key competences involves new approaches. For example, a greater focus on tailoring teaching and learning to meet different student needs, or through project-based learning that emphasizes collaborative and multidisciplinary learning. There's also an emphasis on transversal skills such as creativity and problem solving. Assessment of key competences should reflect these new ways of teaching and learning. As countries have introduced new competences and new curricula, they have also defined new learning objectives or learning outcomes for different stages of their education. New curricula should cover the objectives or outcomes identified, and assessment should measure how well students have attained those goals. All of these elements need to be aligned. If they are misaligned, it's impossible to draw a valid conclusion about how well students have learned or to adapt teaching to better meet student needs. This means that teachers will need to develop new approaches to assessment that are better aligned with a key competence approach. These include summative assessment. This is sometimes referred to as assessment of learning. It includes tests and examinations to assign course grades or at the end of the school year before students advance. Formative assessment, sometimes referred to as assessment for learning, is a kind of interactive assessment that takes place in the course of learning where information on how well students are learning can be used to adjust teaching and learning to help students close the gap between his or her current performance and the learning goal. And lastly, student self-assessment of progress toward the transversal competences. This is the kind of assessment of competences that do not have a learning standard, such as creativity, initiative, and the constructive management of feelings, but where it may be important for each student to track his or her own development. An important thing to keep in mind is that assessment of key competences is very different than in courses where the focus has been on learning specific content. Secondary school teachers may face additional challenges in introducing key competences because student matriculation and university entrance examinations are not yet necessarily well aligned with new key competence approaches. So it is tempting to focus on examination content and focus on helping students to pass tests. A few studies have found that students learning in courses that emphasize the kind of higher order skills featured in key competence curricula may outperform students who are learning in courses that emphasize content knowledge. The students in the first group also tend to retain information longer. Another barrier is that traditional tests often focus on discrete bits of knowledge. With key competences, there's a need for tools that allow students to demonstrate that they can use them knowledge the skills and attitudes to reason and solve problems. New tools such as portfolios and e-assessments may be better aligned and more effective for measuring key competences. Classroom-based formative assessment is also very important for key competence learning. It may be useful to think of formative assessment as an integrated part of the learning process as teachers are able to adjust and scaffold learning to better meet student needs. Teachers are able to discover how well students are grasping new concepts through interactive classroom discussions as they observe and talk with students working on projects. For example, the idea of scaffolding learning means that the teacher provides the student with as much or as little help as he or she needs in order to reach the next stage, building toward the overall learning objective. Students may also assess their own work and readjust their strategies as they work on projects or attempt to solve problems. The key competences also emphasize the importance of transversal skills such as decision taking, creativity, and problem solving. These are the kinds of skills that are important for personal development and for learning to learn. They are also a new challenge for assessment as they fall beyond the subject related learning objectives with clear learning goals. The focus for transversal skills is more on personal development. Tracking tools and portfolios can help teachers and students to focus on these important skills and support learners as they grow and mature. 
We'll explore all of these important ideas in more detail in Module 3, where I'll be talking about the principles behind competence-based assessment, and also be providing you with some examples of good practice in assessing key competences.